Okay, let's talk about BIM in BIMS. First, I'll give you a quick introduction of how the BIM module works, and afterwards we'll jump into BIMS and see how it looks there. You can split the BIM module into four main sections. The first section is the mapping screen, where you upload your IFC files into BIMS. You can also map the different properties of the IFC files into this database structure in PIMS. When you've done uploading your files, PIMS will parse all the IFC files, and when the parsing is done, you will head into the BIM revisions. Here you can analyze the results of the parsing, and uh, you'll get a quick overview of what has happened in this revision as compared to the previous re revision. Once you have approved the revision, you can do one of two things. Either you go into the IFC objects and get a database representation of the objects that you have parsed, or you can go into the BIM viewer and get a, have a look at the 3D model of the project. But let's start at the beginning and look at the mapping screen in PIMS. The mapping screen in PIMS is where you'll upload your IFC files. The grid on the left shows uh, all the IFC files you've uploaded and uh, you can select which discipline the file belongs to and there is an indicator if the file has been parsed or not. A yellow file a yellow icon means that the file has not been parsed, and a green icon means that the file has been parsed. When PIMS has parsed the IFC file, you will get the option to map the properties from the file to the PIMS database. These are all the IFC classes that are included in this particular file. So if we expand this IFC class, we can select which column in the database we want to map an IFC property to. In this case we want to map a property to the a component column in PIMS. So we click this button and we are presented with an overview of all the properties in this IFC file. If we scroll down until we find the property that we want to map, we will select this type property. We click it and we are asked if we want to do this mapping on all the models and if we want to do this mapping on all classes or only for the IFC door class. We will only do it for the IFC door class um, and if we see the mappings for IFC door we will see that the type has been mapped to the component column. When you've done all the mappings that you want, we'll let PIMS parse the IFC files and head over to BIM Revisions. BIM Revisions gives you a quick overview of the result of the parsing. The grid to the left shows all the revisions and gives you the status of them. Uh, here you'll see the number of objects parsed in the revision and the number of rooms and you can choose which uh, revision you want to compare against. If we compare against revision 3 this chart gives you an indication that there has been a development in the electrical discipline. If we want to examine it further we can drill down in the electrical discipline and see all the files that are included in electrical uh, we can see that this file has had some development as well, so we can click this file and see which IFC classes uh, that are included in this file. So basically it's the element proxy and the distribution port classes that have increased. Uh, we can also have an overview of the development of the number of objects per revision and the number of rooms per revision. If you have mapped the maturity index from your IFC file to PIMS, 
we can have a look at that as well. Here we can see that there has been a big increase on objects on the F2 status from the pre previous revision to the current one. If you want to examine it further, we can uh, drill down to the F2 status and we'll see that it's the VVS discipline that has had a big increase in objects on status F2. We also have a chart um, that shows the distribution of the maturities of all the objects in the revision. So here we can see on revision 3 there were most objects had revision F1. On revision 4 there were lesser objects on F1 and more objects on F2 and it continues like this. So you can see that the maturity of the project seems to improve with the revisions. Once you're happy with your revision you can improve it and once it's approved you can um, it will be available for all users in PIMS. So let's improve, uh, improve the revision and uh, head into the IFC objects screen. The BIM objects gives you a database representation of the objects from the IFC file. Uh, the grid on the left shows all the IFC files in the project and the grid in the middle shows all the objects from the selected IFC file. The pane on the right shows you the properties for each object. And this is where the mapping we did in step 1 comes in handy. We have taken the properties and mapped it to the different columns in the database. So for instance the type code property has been mapped into the type code column. That gives us uh, some options, for instance, to filter on the class name of the objects. Let's say we only want to look at the flow controllers. We can quickly filter for that. F furthermore, we, can, we only want to see the object with this given type code. Um, and here is the result. Of course, all these objects also have a 3D representation. Um, and that is what we will have a look at in the BIM viewer. When you open the BIM viewer in PIMS, you are presented with a 2D plan, which is generated based on the IFC files. If you click on a room, it gives you an overview of which issues controls, tests and documents that have been attached to the room. Um, if we want to get an overview of all the controls on this floor, for instance, we can click the control button and it will indicate that the red rooms have controls that have not yet uh, been done. The green rooms have controls that are all been done. The blue dots shows you that there is a control that is directly connected to an object. And this control is to control a countertop that has been installed. So if we show the room in 3D, we should be able to find the control there as well. The countertop is behind us. And if we click on the countertop and look at the control tab, we can see that the control is here as well. If you click um, the control, it will open in a new tab um, to make it easy to perform the control on, for instance, a tablet or a, or a phone. If we click on the info pane, um, you can see all the properties of the object, which is uh, gathered from the IFC file. You can also attach documents to an object. If we click on this wall and select the documents tab, you can see the documents that are attached to this object. 
if you click on a document it will load the document profile for this document. If you want to download the document directly you can click the download link. Um, there are different tools in the BIM viewer but uh, we can have a look at a few of them. We have a measurement tool which will help you measure the object in BIM. So we can see that this this desk is 75 centimeters deep. If you want to measure the distance between two objects you can click on the this object and the other one. Of course it's not so easy to find the the right uh, axis so if you click on the measurement it will give you the measurement in all three axes and in this context it's the x-axis that we are looking for to get rid of the measurements you just uh, close them or you uh, close the measurement tool we also have the possibility to show and hide uh, disciplines so if we go into the show and hide tab you can select which discipline you want to view so if you hide the electrical discipline you can see that all electrical objects will disappear you can also hide individual objects so if you click on this plate you can hide it from BIM and it will be removed. If you want to uh, have it back you can remove it from this hidden objects card. We also have the option to um, slice the model. So to do that we make a new slice, we click the, the plane that we want to slice and we can adjust the slice with the dragging the mouse in this rectangle. We can also choose to only view objects from a certain contract and this is the, the ventilation contract. Uh, we also have a tool to show properties uh, from an object, from, from several objects at the same time. If we start annotation, you can see that the properties become blue. Uh, and uh, let's say we want to find uh, the size of this pipe. So we click the size. And we also want the size of this pipe, and we want the size of this pipe. Uh, we also want the height of the installation. This gives us all these uh, property, th these properties on the different objects at the same time. You can remove an annotation by closing it, or you can remove all annotations at the same time. If you want to quickly navigate on the floor, you can use the minimap um, to go. Let's say we want to load this room, we click this room. will load. So this was a quick overview of BIM in PIMS. It's a powerful module and there is a lot of information in the IFC files. So if you use it in the right way it will really add value to your project.